Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the Land Rover Range Rover SV. The key has SV written on it, but it's the same old boring key. Come on, Land Rover. When you're charging me rupees five crores for this car, you need to give me a special key. Of course, straight away. Let's open the engine bay because it is having the BMW V8 with the Land Rover badging right here. Why is it so greasy? I don't know. Oh my God, it's quite hot. There is where washer fluid goes in. I think this is to circulate air, insulation, gas struts. All of that, obviously, you would expect. But the SV is basically a special vehicle made by SVO division, which is Special Vehicle Operations. And the major difference happens to be the fact that there are cosmetic changes on this car. So this car is available in two packs. One is the Intrepid, which is basically a dynamic or a black pack with glossy finish. And this is actually the Serenity, which is a luxury pack. Now, what have they done? They have put copper here on the Range Rover logo. Otherwise, it's finished in silver. The Land Rover logo now has black finishing behind. The regular one obviously has green finishing. So they've actually changed the logo as well. And you can see this copper finish has been done here as well. The bumper has actually been changed. The regular Range Rover actually has two thicker slats with the fog lamps in between. This one has five slimmer slats with the fog lights moved here. In fact, the bumper is also slightly different. There's a silver skid plate on the regular Range Rover. This one does not have that. It's finished in black, I think. And there's a camera here. It gets digital lights, which are really very powerful. This is for the low beam. This is for the high beam. This is the DRL of the vehicle. And at night, it does this effect when you unlock the car, turning on very smoothly. This is the headlight washer. Thankfully, Land Rover is still offering it. Now, this car is huge. It's massive. This is obviously the long wheelbase, which means it's more than 5.2 meters in terms of length. The wheelbase is more than almost 3.2 meters. The height is 1.9 meters. Right now, it's on off-road height. So, 296 mm of ground clearance. Otherwise, it's around 220, somewhere around that. Meanwhile, the car's width is 2 meters. So, it's huge. Now, you get these optional 23-inch wheels. Standard 22-inch wheels are there with a different design of course these are diamond cut with the copper inserts here as well i don't know why the land rover logo does not point in the right direction come on land rover some attention to detail you can learn from bmw if you can take the engine you can take this as well it says range rover here no actually it says land rover on the black colored brake calipers you can't see it much i think 400 mm disc at the front 370 at the rear huge disc still not very effective that is the air suspension the air springs you get parking sensors almost everywhere because this has got self-park as well. At night, when you unlock the car, from here it projects SD logo on the road. There's a camera here. Obviously, it gets 360 degree parking camera. There are two cameras there. That is for the lane keep assist and obviously for the rain sensor as well. Clamshell bonnet, very tight shut lines. But this doesn't seem to align. Look at this. Yeah, it doesn't really align. That's the reason Tata Motors owns this brand. Again, copper finishing here says SV right here and this copper is almost everywhere in this car so this is where the changes happen again in terms of colors only so really things could have been a lot more different door handles pop in and out it has this contrast roof which is finished in copper again this is optional there are no roof rails here which is kind of surprising and the rear tire size is also the same as the front so this car is actually running on 285 40 23s 23s is an overkill for sure you want to hear the suspension noise Oh my god, that is so soothing to the ears. Here is where fuel goes in. It says 95 octane only because we had engine, of course. And they have also splashed some treatment right there. I think it looks more or less the same as a regular Range Rover. Only thing is certain changes have been done for which they're commanding a premium of 88 lakh rupees when compared to the regular Range Rover autobiography. Okay, autobiography was the top trim. Now is the SUV. By the way, the base variant is the SE, which is standard equipment. Then there's the HSC, which is the high standard equipment. Then the autobiography, then the SV. Vogue is no longer there. By the way, Vogue was always a lower variant. I don't know why people trip over saying, Oh my God, Range Rover Vogue. It's a lower variant, you fools. Anyway, <laughs> Range Rover has been finished in copper here as well. Sequential indicators, which look really very nice. I love the way the lights have been done. At night, when you unlock the car, beautifully the lights come out, which is fantastic. Here is a spray to clean the camera as well. And you get cameras so many places that they have put one on the shark fin antenna. Why are there two of them? Right one is for the radio, left one is for the clear sight camera. Rear wiper is actually hidden, a very range over trade, which obviously Hyundai has copied with the Tucson. And SV badging here is actually finished in ceramic. 
which is the very first time this has been done in any car which is fantastic again you get this copper treatment at the rear as well these are the rear fog lights on both the sides obviously parking sensors everywhere and the exhaust is actually hidden so it gets quad exhaust that is the fuel tank you can see the tire size it's freaking massive now let's open the boot which means all i have to do is press a button and there it opens now there's a party trick here because it gets something known as an event suite basically the tailgate event suite so i have to press it manually to open this and there it opens so whenever i open this boot this thing goes back i can actually manually push it ahead if i want so there i press a button and there it comes ahead that is also electric yeah the passenger shelf is also electric this car pushes the very boundary of what all can be electric yeah crazy amount of electrical bits in this car and electronics and range over really don't go hand in hand just saying here you get a hook you also get a light one there as well four freaking lights in the boot who does that there is a 12 volt charging socket this is the first aid kit i believe and there's also another first aid kit inside which i'll show you in a bit what is this I think okay there is a towing hook a range over does not need a towing hook let's throw this away and there's a strap here as well where is the spare wheel it is actually right here oh my god i got it you have to actually pull it like this and then open it it is finished in orange it's not full size in fact it says temporary use only yeah cost cutting there jack there i only wonder how do you even access or remove it that's going to be really very difficult so why is this so cumbersome simply because firstly i need to shut this because i can't reach only it's i think 750 liter somewhere around that is the size of the boot it's a huge boot so the refrigerator is actually taking space because of which this has to be pushed inside here yeah, that was stuff and obviously because this car is made by britishers there has to be a partition somewhere here and there is one right there okay things are getting a bit messy but honestly why didn't range rover make these i mean the seating like that in a rolls royce cullinan because these picnic seats now are not the easiest to operate so i'm just going to set it up for you and show it to you uh, yeah i think this is how it slots in i need to put this i need to remove that as well which is kind of stuck oh my god i would never do all this just to go on a picnic I would prefer to sit inside but then Land Rover is saying that this is a 7 seater in a 7 seater version where the seats are there not here this is just for your picnic so you can just put the cushions right here and have a nice picnic with music playing from the speakers right above there's also a light here isn't that so awesome but this manual thing in a Range Rover how can that be not cool Land Rover not cool okay let me just push this inside yeah eating all the boot doing all this and then it has to be further ahead so i can at least shut this to shut this i have to press this here this there and there it shuts it also opens from this side because britishers and partitions they love to be made in heaven or hell whatever not for us indians so and this thing is supposed to be inside here but it somehow come out and then this material is very cheap and sticky i hate it so split tailgate a very bmw thing because bmw developed the third generation of the range rover when they owned land rover and that is the reason why they have borrowed the engine from bmw of course look at that ride height it's crazy i will not be able to get inside with that ride height so we'll do one thing we'll open the boot again and there are buttons right here so this is obviously to move ahead and behind this passenger shelf and this is to recline the rear seat so if i press this button there you will notice one thing the driver seat is going ahead this thing is reclining behind making this weird sound and then it will push itself ahead so if i want to carry luggage i can carry a long item as well but i don't understand why is doing it on the driver side is this car configured for left hand drive market i don't know because actually land rover is technically a right hand drive market brand so there it does that it doesn't do it here because everything is so electric now so now we are going to get it back i press a button and there it is coming back it's slow but it's electric so it gets the job done and there it puts it back into place i don't think people who buy this car are going to really care about ca carrying additional items but the fact that it moves the driver seat is kind of weird now here are buttons to increase or decrease the ride height i press this button and there you can hear the suspension noise it is squatting the car down so that it's easier for me to put in luggage all these electronics are a bit of an overkill in this car but hey they are working at least right now they are so you can increase or decrease the ride height using these buttons which are touch sensitive and there's a hook here as well let's shut this i press a button there it shuts guys got a bit dirty because it's raining cats and dogs and now you can see with the ride height down it's more down from there 
the car looks really very sexy yeah you can completely squat it down if you want let's get into the rear first and foremost this car has a 32 speaker 1600 watt audio system which is in freaking sane says range rover sv right here door pockets are big enough and you get your own headsets which are wireless it is sv branded of course so there they are yeah kind of cool work really well and i think there's some cable here as well probably to charge them <laughs> let me just put this back inside now obviously door pockets are big enough it gets isofix child seat mounts as well and an ottoman too now you want luxury no problem get into the screen swipe it upwards get into seats and it's time to press adjust and recline when i press this recline button this seat goes back this seat goes all the way ahead and the headrest will actually go down this screen will move its angle downwards as well and it will keep pushing itself and then opening a foot rest for you to relax your foot as well and then this ottoman will start moving too to give you a lot more space so look at that amount of space insane right fantastic headrest it's not as soft as a mercedes s class and talking about the mercedes s class it has a better recline angle for the rear seat so s class 1 range over 0 s class also has a mirror here so you can see your rich face S Class 2, Range Rover 0. Let's get inside. Now, this is a screen with which you operate almost everything in this car. So, first things first, I am going to actually adjust this. So, I press this button and then I'm going to take this up. Yeah, <laughs> this Ottoman is really very awesome. And there's so much leg room now that my knee, uh, I mean, obviously now my knees are pointing upwards. But my leg is not touching anywhere. I'm six feet two inches tall, which means that there is a ton of leg room. But then you're like, okay, fine. What we should do, we can probably move this further ahead. And I can do that as well. Look, I'm actually pushing it ahead. It says adjust seats of passenger head restraint to ensure unobstructed view. That is mandatory. Otherwise, people can't see on the left side. But car is saying, I warned you. It's your problem now. Look at the amount of space. Headroom is also quite nice. Land Rover cap, of course. There's a handle to hold on to. Leather finishing. There's a light here. AC vent placement here and no height adjustable seat belts. A lot of airbags says airbag air. Hook is also finished in metal right there. But look at the amount of space. It's absolutely freaking crazy. I totally love the amount of space they have given. I mean, what else do you want in a car? Okay, you obviously want a screen. So there are two of them. Autobiography gets 11.4 inch screens. These are 13.1 inch screens. 13 is a Panauti number. They should have opted for 14 inch screens. So you can connect with HDMI. You can see a lot of stuff here. But you can't really control all the stuff which you can control in other cars with the front infotainment system. No, that can't be done. You just restrict yourself to doing your own work right here. So this screen actually operates a lot of stuff. So here for seat, I can adjust so many parameters. I can adjust the bolstering as well. So bolsters can be adjusted. Yeah, it is very much functional. And then the best thing is that I can move this Ottoman all the way to the top. I really like it. You can get into massage. It's loading. No, I have to turn on the button there. And I can decide five intensities for the massage. I can decide what kind of massage type I want. What is the massage direction as well? Check that out. Isn't that freaking cool? So basically, the autobiography comes with an executive rear seat. This car comes with executive plus rear seats. But this one is actually the SV signature suite, which is only available with the long wheelbase version because the short wheelbase version will not have enough space for me to do all this. And this is obviously optional but you can control so many parameters. Now, of course, you want to crack a business deal. How do you do that? It's going to be uncomfortable holding a laptop on your knees, right? That's so wrong. So you actually press a button and I press a button and there the table comes out. Motorized tables as well in this car. Can you freaking believe it? I will pull it towards myself. I will open it like this and then I will turn it around, put my laptop, crack a deal. Yeah, 100 crores. Hmm. I know I look more like Koi oh. Milgya ka person trying to send a single to Jadu. But you get the drift and then obviously you can turn it the other side as well. So both of you have to share a table. That's so wrong. I'm not going to share with anybody. And then I press a button and I say bye bye table and then the table goes back inside. But where do I keep my cup or a glass? Well, it has got motorized cup holders as well. There the cup holder rises. How unbelievable is that? But obviously, I can't have a hot drink, right? I need a cold drink in this hot weather. I need a refrigerator. Don't worry, they have catered to that too. This is a refrigerator. You don't pull it like this because that is also freaking electric. Yeah, you press a button and there it opens. <laughs> Unfreaking believable. You have these SV badge glasses with so much space below occupied for God knows what reason I was just going to drop it and break something which could cost probably 50,000 rupees. 
but this is something which most restaurants will adapt because this way they have to give a lesser drink to the customer so there are two of these glasses right here and they slot into place so they do not make any vibration oopsie my phone has fallen down so yeah they don't make any vibrations at all and this is actually the menu i just press a button and there it closes electric stuff is insane but center passenger does not get ahead because center passenger is not welcome only this is the proper four seater only fifth passenger is not welcome i'm so sorry i can't accommodate you let's get out from the menu so you can adjust the climate obviously the air conditioning these seats are cooled heated yeah ventilation and heating is also there obviously so you can decide how you want the air flow to happen there's air purifier as well then you can decide how you want the rear screen brightness to be all that is obviously crazy and then you can operate the blinds as well so here if i want to shut the blinds okay how do i do that uh, uh um actually the car has turned off so that's not going to work at the moment but yes I can do a lot of things from here from this screen. I think it's an 8 inch screen in terms of size. Fantastic. Really nice and easy UI. This also opens. So there's a wireless charging pad with a strap so your mobile phone does not move and it's deep enough with a cigarette lighter and if you notice two HDMI plugs along with two USB Cs as well and a proper laptop charger too. So that's absolutely crazy and that's not all. It also gets a very nice ashtray although I definitely don't encourage smoking but they still put it anyways so this is the one which slots into place so nothing actually vibrates you can remove it and you can put some other stuff inside this probably it has range rover badging on it as well so crazy attention to detail coming to the door oh my god it is so heavy there it says meridian signature nice uh, controls for the door handle this is to unlock the car this is to lock the car and there are multiple controls here so from here i can actually operate all the windows yeah, the other rear windows so i can operate the sun blinds here i can decide if i want to use both the sun blinds this is to adjust the seat positioning of course but because the car has decided to turn off itself and i don't know why latest cars just so miserly when it comes to fuel they just want to turn off themselves so access height i will select the car will recline till that time i will show you here i have selected both so i press a button and there both of them will go down i didn't select both i think yeah it's not very visible now it's coming down yeah there you can select what control you want to use in fact this is for the light so there are multiple lights here on the top i can decide what light i want to use i just close the door and see it yeah multiple controls i can turn off the volume from here if i so wish because i want to have a peaceful nap so lot of controls right here let's get out before that let's put the seat back into position which is very easy because i go into seats and then the seat heat function separately where i can turn it on adjust reset i press reset this thing comes up this thing goes down this thing comes back this thing goes up everything happens beautifully you can also get eco friendly stuff in this car like leather free interior so they call it some sort of a fabric and there it will go back now if you notice one thing the color theme is there's dark here there's light here but the front seats are darker color so this is sort of brown this is sort of beige or light brown and that is my sweat so sorry car but look at this this is like a huge vehicle and then you have got soft close door function there it pulls it back inside to shut it as well okay here you get the blind spot monitor and this is how the front indicator works so yeah dynamic swipe indicator of course meanwhile it says sv right here along with the chassis number or the vehicle number or the engine number or some of the other number i really don't care about car looks absolutely phenomenal trust me on this the kind of road presence it has on freaking believable no other car comes even close and now with the ride height all the way down you can see it looks quite sporty and nice this is the key of the vehicle lock the car unlock the car turn on the light and open the boot and this is to sound some sound hazard sv written here on the key i'm disappointed with the fact that this thing although it glows doesn't glow bright enough this is to open the hood of the vehicle dead pedal there this is to open the boot and here you can see yeah electric adjust for the steering wheel and electric adjust is obviously there for the seat as well so you can move the seat in a lot of positions then i'm putting it down comfortable seats really nice and then these are different seats when compared to what we usually get with the range rover you can see this graphic here yeah that is sweet in fact this thing also eliminates the seat belt buckle to tell you that where the seat belt is located kind of nice i'll just press a button to put everything back into place there it's moving everything is obviously paired to a memory memory function is available with three of those memories which can be saved which is quite nice seat belt 
regular bit. This is going to get really dirty, so color theme could be better. Door pockets are large enough, and you can see a lot of metal here and there. These are the controls which are touch sensitive for the outside rear view mirror adjustment. This is for child lock, and this is, I think, for some weird function. I press this button, I don't even know what is happening, but yeah, this car has an excess of buttons, some of which you don't even understand what they mean. But, anyways, yeah, nice leather finishing, double stitching, beautiful. Dashboard looks quite nice, lovely looking dashboard. I love the steering wheel, how the steering wheel has been done in this vehicle. Now let's get inside, okay. Soft closed door function, then I don't have to push it all the way inside, there it shuts. First things first, let's turn off the indicator, yeah. And we are going to turn on the car, which means I have to press this button. There it turns on. Clear sight camera here. Yeah, the rear view mirror actually has a camera. This thing actually has two sun visors so one is like this the other is like that yeah so that privacy is extremely important and then obviously you get a mirror along with the light same is the case on this side as well two of them with a uh, mirror and light in fact there's light placement here on the top press a button to activate the light these are the controls for the sunroof so we are just going to open the sunroof there press a button it's actually tilted i keep it pressed once again and there it opens it's actually quite wide and you see leather is placed here on the top as well this guy has excess of leather yet the aston martin dbx has even more leather than this okay that's the maximum it opens so you're going to press a button and shut this smooth but a bit slow and obviously that sun blind is also quite massive mic placement here on the top two glove boxes so the rear one or rather the lower one has this manual which says sv on it with a very chintu mintu booklet. So I think this is for the service record. Yeah, again leather. And there's a pen holder there as well. Let's open the one on the top, which has this beautiful lining too, and a very, very, very cheap first aid kit. This is something I got with my motorcycle, and that was like something Hero Splendor level, so I don't know why it is like that. This doesn't close, you have to actually push it to close it. This is a 13.1, no, this is a 13.7 inch screen. This is a 13.1 inch screen. They just have all 13 inch screens in this car. And instead of metal and all, metal is here, of course, they have used ceramic in all the places, which looks fantastic. Even on the dashboard, ceramic, very nice, okay. The co-passenger can also open and close the doors, but I don't like the positioning. It is so low down. It's not easy to see. So you have to actually move, jiggle, and then only you can reach it. Very disappointed with that. Touch controls right here. This is for lane keep assist. And this is obviously for the cruise control. Steering heat is also there. These are the controls to operate the audio system as well as that screen, which is quite easy. So it's giving me quite a lot of information. And then I can change the display layout as well. It's not very intuitive to use. I'll be honest about that because Mercedes has a slicker system which is faster. So UI is not that great. This is obviously for the wipers. Wipers work really well. And this is for the light control. So it doesn't have a mechanism on the right usually, which is the case with luxury cars. This is the control for the lights, automatic headlights, automatic wiper, steering feels nice to hold on. Horn is also nice and loud. Air conditioner is a chiller. You get a heads up display, which actually shows you difference only when you get into dynamic mode. So it's actually going to show you the tachometer there. The tachometer has come. And then it also shows you a different version of the instrument cluster as soon as you get into dynamic mode. So this is auto terrain response. When you get out of it, you can actually access the various modes by going through this. Yeah. So they are like one, two, three, four, five, six, nine driving modes, freaking nine driving modes, which is a lot. Downhill assist, this is cruise control for low speeds. Engine start button, volume controller, beautiful gear lever, which feels nice to hold. Here you get a wireless charging pad and a cigarette lighter, some storage space as well, kind of smooth. Here you get twin cup holders and because this car is powered by a BMW engine, you also get a BMW key. Isn't that cool? Just kidding, this is the key of the BMW X1, which I'm driving right now. And here you get a cooled compartment, which is a chiller, which has got light inside as well. To adjust this armrest, you have to actually gumao this, which is very inconvenient. Come on, this could be smoother. And if you notice, the headdress are like really fat. It gets something known as active noise cancellation, where it plays reverse frequency sounds from the speakers right next to your ear to cancel out low frequency sounds to ensure that the cabin is absolutely silent. It says airbag here on the A pillar as well. Now, air conditioning controls here, which is quite unique because if you notice, this is the temperature. Now, if I pull it towards myself, then I can turn on the fan speed controller. And if I press it inside, if I go left, seat ventilation. If I go right, seat heating. So it's a bit complex. Once you get used to it, you like it. Thankfully, there are physical controls here. 
This screen is quite nice, yeah. It's a lovely screen, plenty of information. So you can get into vehicle info, like the wheel info, it shows you how the wheel is turning. You can get into weight sensor, which shows you basically what is the weighting capacity, which is 900 mm, by the way. TR info, which actually tells you what do the various drive modes of this car actually do? Yeah, isn't that an information overload? So you can go through this and see so much information to help you which drive mode you should be driving. And then there is self park as well, which kind of parks in the wrong direction always. Then obviously the 360 degree parking cameras, side view, front view and all. And then I can get a bottom view as well. So cameras everywhere, this shows you how the differential is working, on-road cameras, off-road cameras and beautiful. I mean, look at the camera. It's unbelievably awesome. Of course, it's got a 3D view as well. So we're just going to turn on the 3D view. I think this is the 3D view. <laughs> what am I even doing? So I can just turn it around like that. It could be a slicker one still. Yeah, that is the beautiful camera. In fact, let's get into reverse. So this is the reverse parking camera, which gets adaptive guidelines. And depending on the position, it will move ahead and behind the camera, of course. And then the mirror will go down when you get into reverse. If you notice one thing, camera quality is fantastic. I press this button now, then it will actually spray the camera there. I press there, spray comes to clean the rear camera as well. And then you can turn off the parking sensors if you don't want any sound. So cameras are fantastic in this car. You can connect a phone, this for media, this for wheel information. Just browse through this. It's quite intuitive to use, which is quite impressive. There's a compass. It tells you what is the energy impact of driving a Range Rover, which is out of place here, to be honest. You can decide how you want your driving style, eco tips and all. So it's loaded with a lot of information. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wireless. Valley mode is also there. I actually turned on low traction launch, something of that sort. So a lot of information. In fact, you want to see your vehicle dimensions. There is a menu for that as well. In fact, when you raise the ride height, these numbers will also change, which is in freaking sane. So yeah, plenty of information here. You can get into cabin lighting to change the ambient lighting. By the way, it has got there multiple ambient light colors as well. There's something known as tailgate event suite. This is obviously if you want to make your car a disco air quality. Yes, it has an air purifier as well. Let's get into seats because it's got massage function for the front seats. Five massage types and you can change the intensity by five. And then you can also change the direction of the massage by five. So yes, plenty of information. Screen is nice, but obviously it is a fingerprint magnet. This is for the hazard light. It says Meridian Suite. Cluster is very nice, very nicely done. A lot of information you get and then you can change a lot of parameters. You just get into this menu and then it's a little slow because this touch capacitive control isn't nice. But as I see it, this is the ultimate luxury SUV. Look at this car. Isn't it beautiful? Let's start driving right away. All right, we're all set to go. First and foremost, let's turn off the air conditioning. And it is quite an amazing air conditioning system. It's a chiller, honestly. So air conditioning off completely. Next thing, we are actually going to get into this menu. I'm just going to put something interesting here, which means I just browse through this. Wheel information. Okay, yes, 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 I agree to everything you say. And I'm also going to turn on the cameras because why not we turn on the on-road cameras. Let me actually turn on the 3D camera. I don't know how long it's going to last, but We'll just see it straight away. I'm going to remove it from auto terrain response system Two, we get into dynamic mode, gearbox into drive, gearbox into sport. And then I also have to turn off the traction control system. So here into drive, DSC off. It makes this sound to tell me why have you done that? That's so illegal. <laughs> Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, hazard lights off, revving the motor, dynamic launch activated and off we go. Holy, holy, holy. What is this engine? It has so much performance. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah? The grunt is unreal. It really pushes forward with so much enthusiasm. And we lift off the throttle now. Nah? I'm eating words. Okay. When you lift off the throttle, it's still going. Yeah, it's still going. That is the level of performance and thrust. But obviously, this is a heavy car. It's a huge car. So you have to contend with all that weight as well. Yeah, so you have to be a little careful. <laughs> because around the corners, you can feel a lot of roll. Look at the roll. Okay. You can feel it, but want to power out no problem get on a throttle it absolutely smashes ahead unreal it defies physics this car weighs 2600 kgs yet it is able to manage all this performance so brilliantly well 
ऑल थैंक्स टू बी एम डब्ल्यू हूज फोर पॉइंट फोर लीटर बाइटर बो वी एट पावर्स दिस कार वेन फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम आई केम टू नो द लैंड ओवर इज डिच इट्स फाइव लीटर एजे सुपर चार्ज पेट्रोल इंजिन वी एट ऑफकोर्स इन लू ऑफ बी एम डब्ल्यू फोर पॉइंट फोर लीटर वी एट आई वॉज सो हैप्पी आई लाइक सिक्स हंड्रेड हॉर्स पावर इन रेंज ओवर वट बी सो क्रेजी बट देन दिस कार इज द पी फाइव थर्टी इट डजेंट हैव सिक्स हंड्रेड हॉर्स पावर इन स्टेट इट हैज गॉट फाइव हंड्रेड थर्टी हॉर्स पावर एज द नेम सजेस्ट सो वेर डिड ऑल दो हॉर्सेज गो well i think they've given them a lower state of tune or this car is actually programmed for smoother performance yeah i kind of disappointed with that i expected 600 horsepower but look at this a car so heavy steering is so quick to turn man oh my goodness like speed of the steering really blows your mind and so does the performance it just pushes ahead with so much enthusiasm brakes are also nice and strong yeah very strong brakes only thing is that you expect slightly more because there's this nose dive under heavy braking and i'll be honest brakes are not that great because i stopped so i thought okay it's good but it did not give me much confidence on the brake pedal so 400 mm disc at the front 370 mm at the rear So why didn't they get 600 horsepower? I don't know. BMW is like, you want my engine? Okay, lower state of tune for you. But now, thankfully for MY24, which is model year 2024, this car gets mild hybrid tech. Oh, I'm praising mild hybrid tech. When did that happen? Because with that, there's an 85 horsepower power boost. So this engine will then produce 615 horsepower. Finally, but. That means that you cannot buy this car right now. Get it in M by twenty four with the mild hybrid tech for six hundred and fifteen horsepower. That would be something because this car goes from zero to hundred kilometers per hour in four point seven seconds. I expect it to go from zero to hundred kilometers per hour in approximately four point three seconds, which is quite quick, huh? For a car of this weight and size, seven hundred and fifty newton meters of torque. Now, seven hundred and fifty newton meters of torque will continue to be coming later as well, which is good enough. But honestly. Oh, if you have driven a V8 powered BMW car, which is mostly an M, you will not be able to identify this engine. No, you just cannot because it's lost the complete character, the madness. I mean, it's responsive and all that stuff, but doesn't make sound. Just so silent and refined. Now they have removed all the sound, even though it has quad exhaust, which are hidden underneath. It simply does not have the same level of sound and madness. It's very linear. They've just like removed the soul from BMW's engine. I don't know why they have done that, but yeah, performance is good, but it doesn't sound that great. It doesn't feel that raw and robust. It just feels smooth, refined, gets the job done in a very fast manner. Top speed, I think, 250 kilometers per hour. Eight speed ZF sourced automatic gearbox. Which is smooth with shifts. This is actually a torque converter. Yeah, maybe. Who cares? Who knows? The point is that this is a car you would not push like I am doing right now. This is a car more about gobbling up the miles, and in that regard, also it fails miserably because of these big fat wheels that it's running on. 23-inch wheels are just an overkill for this car because trust me on this, you can feel a lot of the road inside. Yeah, lower profile tires don't do well, and plus because of the big wheels, now there's this jolt. So it doesn't really feel how a Range Rover should, but yes, it definitely wafts along on the smoothest of roads. You feel like there is actually an air curtain between you and the road. Yeah, between the car and the road, not you and the road, because definitely there's an air curtain between you and the car because the seat obviously has ventilation. But whatever, 24-way adjustable seat, which I'm sitting on right now. Absolutely overkill. In fact, this car gets 14 bespoke colors. Yeah, you can only get those colors on the SV, and there's gloss finish as well. And I'm impressed by the fact that this camera doesn't turn off at all. It's always on, thankfully. So let's just get into this menu, and I'm just going to get into the info panel and change this. Maybe we get to the map thing. I hate these kind of buttons. That there in Mercedes cars also touch control, touch sensitive controls. Why? Why do you do that? It's not needed at all. Just spoils the whole experience of uh, using the steering mounted buttons. Now, will it hold on to a gear? It should. So we are in first gear, and off we go. Oh my God! Six and a half thousand RPM red line. You know what? The gear shifts are decently quick, but when I do it with manual mode, now gear shifts are very slow. It just takes a lot of time to upshift. You know why? Because this car is a British car owned by an Indian company with the engine from Germany, so it sends a command to all these three. Countries and whoever responds first gives it a go ahead to make that shift. That's the reason it's super duper duper slow. I'm not impressed by the gearbox when you're using manual mode. In fact, it has got a ton of drive modes as well, like crazy amount of drive modes. This car has got nine freaking drive modes. Right now we are in bonkers drive mode, which is dynamic mode, which obviously gives better performance. But this car is drinking fuel like nobody's business. Four or three kilometers per liter is what I'm getting mileage. Eighty liter fuel tank means I have a realistic range of around. 8 into 3 what very poor honestly and left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator here gearbox into sport again dynamic launch activated and off we go 
a chipset 6000 rpm when i do the dynamic launch bit and i've left the throttle it still keeps pulling ahead that is the kind of performance it has to offer un freaking believable what a car what an engine this engine really blows your mind so smooth and so refined i wish bmw had tuned it completely then it would have that soul and character and would sound also nice because right now it just doesn't have the sound you would expect from an engine of this kind it just feels so six cylinder sort of doesn't feel like a v8 at all i don't know why there's no cylinder deactivation honestly who really cares because next year range rover is going electric as well there's going to be an electric version of the range rover with a 1000 kilowatt hour battery pack because that's what it needs with its 2600 kgs we're just kidding now it will not have such a big battery pack but probably it needs one so i'm just going to change the display layout while on the move so i'm just going to come to focused one yeah there it is it's okay yeah baby I like a proper tachometer. Ground clearance is not an issue. 219 mm is the standard ground clearance, which can be extended all the way to 290 something. So yes, you can alter the ground clearance a lot. Yeah, so took three years for the gear shift to happen. In fact, forget the ground clearance for a moment. This car also has 900 mm of water wading capacity. Oh man, what! performance this car feels just way too quick then it should but trust me if you're looking to save money then this 3 liter straight 6 is probably the engine for you now avoid the tree i know it's in the real center of the road but the performance of the 3 liter is also quite adequate in fact we shall stop and launch it right ahead which means get out of auto terrain response we are going to get into dynamic mode which will help me give it the full beans dynamic mode activated clear sight camera activated oh by the way we also have to turn off traction control which i will do by getting into the car setting right here left foot on the brake sport mode for the gearbox right foot on the accelerator red lines at around 6 and a half thousand rpm performance is actually quite good it gets the job done it doesn't feel sluggish only thing is it doesn't give you the kind of performance you would expect for this price overall i would say that uh, people will end up buying this engine quite a lot because people want the show and the luxury of the range rover not really the performance and that's the reason they might avoid the 4.4 liter v8 which is in a different league altogether that's 530 horsepower this is 130 horsepower down producing 400 horsepower and 550 newton meters of torque 0 to 100 km per hour in around 5.8 seconds which isn't too bad to be honest and because this engine is lighter of course it kind of feels better in terms of handling especially when you're trying to corner hard it feels slightly better it doesn't feel as floaty right also feels better because of the smaller wheels here but if you're buying a range rover you really don't care about 1 2 3 4 more crores right so just get the sv because the performance there is just another level now there is a cow crossing so we are going to come to a halt right away cross dude cross he was telling me you cross no you cross bro you cross okay i'll cross okay you cross fine i'll cross that really crossed my mind anyways so top speed is around 245 kilometers per hour which is adequate because you don't want the chauffeur to be driving very fast indeed right when you're trying to crack a meeting or trying to crack a deal sitting in the rear seat of course not gearbox is decently responsive it's not very fast with shifts and obviously you've got manual control as well which is fine not really useful because come on you're in a range rover who's actually going to get into dynamic mode like ever brakes are the same i think only thing is that you're having lighter weight lugging around in that car the 4.4 liter v8 and then when you come across a corner trust me you need balls of steel to actually fling it from one direction to another and it performs quite well traction control is off but esp kicked in right there and there it will hold on to a gear it will not upshift engine is super refined but becomes quite vocal in the higher end of the rev range which means it's time to launch again left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator and check this out okay we are trying to do dynamic launch control they are activated okay this is impressive but for me personally it is the 4.4 liter v8 which i want to drive so let's get back to it right away now driving the 4.4 you will never miss the base engine which is the 3 liter which i was driving earlier it just doesn't have the performance by the way this car has a five axle independent rear suspension which does a fantastic job the suspension is really good only thing is row profile tires don't really help it cause you can hear the road noise you can hear the tire noise as well overall insulation is nice but definitely you can hear a lot of the road yeah 
that's kind of unfortunate by the way if you notice the washer is actually coming out of the wiper so there are no nozzles as such everything is inbuilt into the wiper that is the level of attention to detail and the heads up display could be a lot better but yes it gets the job done but let's talk about pricing this car is insanely priced like in freaking insanely priced and it doesn't even get proper adas yeah it gets lane keep assist that's about it other than that it doesn't really get much although i think you can configure it but you really don't need adas in india so i'm not going to complain or crib about that what i'm going to tell you though is that this car has good handling yeah it does handle well it is quite soft it does bounce around quite a bit like here yeah it's sort of wafting along and there's plenty of body roll but the steering is actually quite good it's very light at low speeds it moves with absolute speed when you want to make a u turn so yeah the steering feels like really responsive little bit dead in the center position and it's not meant to be very aggressive around the corners it's not an svr it's an sv remember So yes that is the difference but you know what this particular car's turning radius will shock you completely surprise you because the turning radius is around 5.5 meters for a car of this size it's very less how does it i mean manage all that because this car has rear wheel steering which turns by up to 7 degrees at lower speeds in the opposite direction to virtually reduce the wheelbase and it works fantastically well in fact you can go in circles like this completely the only thing which will stop you is the motion sickness which will kick in soon otherwise this car will just glide. light through that is just unbelievable taking it out of parking putting it back into parking is just hassle free in this car and obviously you want me to do the brake test so here we go and hazard lights on tire noise in a car of this price is so uncalled for Okay, let's go again. Sport mode. Let's turn on the off-road camera. I don't know till when it's going to work. Hazard lights off and dynamic launch activated. Wow, the cameras work really well and cope up at higher speeds as well. Now this is obviously the PV Pro system, and I'm just going to come back. because i want to see if this wheel information works at speed yeah it does it shows me the angle of the wheel and everything it's quite nice as well now this car is very 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 expensive firstly there are 50 variants on offer who offers 50 variants land rover does unko kya farak padta you order one and then they'll make one in the uk and send it to you taking their own sweet time because obviously this is a cbu which means that 50 variants are spread across various trims Firstly the base is the SE which stands for standard equipment then there's the HSC which is high standard equipment then of course there is the autobiography which is the top variant usually but then there's a first edition as well and that's not all there's the SV the SV cost rupees 88 lakhs more than the first edition this guy i don't know what he's doing maybe he's trying to dodge that camera on the top maybe he knows more because he's mh06 panvel area <laughs> but anyways like i was telling you there are 50 variants because it's available in short wheel base and long wheel base you pay 20 lakhs more for the long wheel base version there's a diesel of course the 3 liter diesel which is fantastic but seems kind of underpowered d350 350 horsepower there are three petrol engines there's a 3 liter which you saw earlier on in the vlog which is the base engine and it's okay it gets the job done i think 400 horsepower then there's a plug in hybrid as well which is much more powerful and more efficient as well and you can drive on electric only mode in there that's also nice and then there's this engine this is the top of the line v8 which is bmw sourced of course and it has beautiful performance it's absolutely stunning in the way it performs really this is the engine you should opt for but you need a fuel pump of your own because this car obviously drinks a lot of fuel and has a lights off dynamic launch Honestly you have to really stand on the brake pedal to get dynamic launch started otherwise it really doesn't work easily the launch control system in this car but a launch control in a range rover just imagine your chauffeur doing all this and more yeah let him also enjoy life why not because driving this car is a very difficult job it's so expensive it's so expensive that you wonder that should you actually make this overtake what happens if somebody touches and gets a scratch on this car because the price of this car on road mumbai is rupees 4.94 crores 4.94 freaking crore do you even know how many zeros are there in that i don't know the base variant is actually priced at rupees 2.83 crores oh my god so accessible but if you're buying a range rover get the top of the line actually autobiography is fine this sv is just excess but with that excess you also distribute a lot of your money around everywhere because the insurance cost for the first year is rupees 16.4 lakhs 4 lakhs is the tcx collected on this car tax collected as tolls and the first year no there's registration only in the first year otherwise after 15 years when you have to pay the green tax and all that stuff 
up the registration cost of this car is almost 56 lakhs 56 lakhs you want to save some money you pay 10 lakhs less for the same car but with a diesel engine or pay 3 lakhs less for the same car but with the plug-in hybrid the six cylinder plug-in hybrid engine honestly if you're paying so much just get the v8 now why you want to do magaj mari and try to save money here just don't buy this car in bangalore or hyderabad because both of these places are so oh, look at the turning radius man what a freaking joke is that and steering centers like crazy unbelievable engineering has gone into this car so steering is amazing at low speeds yeah, it's so light and the rear wheel steering is such a blessing i love it like i was telling you in the south bangalore and hyderabad the price of this car is 5.13 crores so it's not just bangalore which is faltu mein badnam of having really high road taxes hyderabad is no less yeah 5.13 crores is enough to buy a house and a few cars as well you get the autobiography save 88 lakhs and get a new woke as well so you can do such things if you want to save money but then this is the ultimate luxury suv what are its rivals though you might ask well it rivals the aston martin dbx which is priced slightly more than this around 5 and a half 6 crores 50 lakhs don't matter na if you're in the budget of buying something of that price and then look at this the weight corner i'm full flat out on the throttle it is just going there's so much grip from the tires obviously the terrain response system is mad it senses a lot of things and makes adjustments to the differential to the engine to gearbox to the steering wheel to so many other things to make sure that your drive is absolutely effortless to the suspension to air suspension here this is a monocoque platform earlier on the range over the earlier for generation 1 was a land ladder frame actually it never ever had leaf springs uh, earlier it had coil springs so always been a sophisticated top of the line suv this is a car which i would buy eyes closed I would not look at the price if I had that kind of money. I would look at the reliability, which is not as good as this car or these cars here. The Toyota Land Cruisers, the LC 300s, which are obnoxiously priced in India. This car is also obnoxiously priced in India. I don't know why it's priced so high. Now there are nine drive modes, nine freaking drive modes. Who puts nine drive modes in a car? So there is a dynamic mode, there is an eco mode, which is kind of silly. There is a stop start system as well. There is a comfort mode, which obviously makes the suspension go a little easy and not as hard and stiff then grass gravel snow mud rut sand rock crawl wade and you can obviously configure all this and more i look kind of silly to uh, actually going through all these drive modes right now camera on use not recommended after 40 kilometers per hour then why have the camera in the first place i want to look at this beautiful car now it's getting up and saying comfort program selected darling i want the dynamic program now the thing is this thing has hung it just will not respond what is wrong with you just give me the mode which i am looking for which means i just have to stop here let the car cool down and sometimes what happens if you keep using the air suspension because while shooting obviously i was raising it reducing it raising it reducing it let's turn this on because we can it's not going to stay let's turn on the clear side camera left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator dynamic launch the range over you saw earlier in the video that had a that i mean that also has a dynamic launch but it stopped working after some attempts of launches which doesn't really happen in bmw cars even mercedes cars mostly they start and all work fantastically well but i think the system got overheated now this is the fifth generation model of the range rover it has been on sale since almost 50 years plus so yes it's an iconic car which is excess in almost every way this sv of course sv is the equivalent of maybach for mercedes and the svr is equivalent of amg from mercedes so that's how you actually put these cars together and with the sv you have 1.6 million customizable options yeah you can customize this in 1.6 million ways which is a crazy lot yeah and that's the reason you would opt for an sv because the regular is not enough for you in fact you can take this car off road as well now land rover india has told me specifically not to take this car off road because things can break here or there but i did get an opportunity to take the other range over off road because i was not told not to take it off road so i did take it off road in a very uh, dal dal ke and extremely cautious and you can see this car can do things like this and this and even this unfreaking believable right 
a range rover doing all this so effortlessly i actually felt that i'm not even in the car because it was self drive it automatically would do all all of it i was merely turning the light steering here or there that is the kind of effortlessness this car has to offer and talking about the price i have to tell you that the main rival is not mercedes maybach gls the main rival is not this either the toyota land cruiser lc300 this car's main rival is the bentley bentega ewb which is extended wheelbase which is priced from 7.08 crores onward on road mumbai or the rolls royce cullinan which is priced from rupees 8.2 crores on road mumbai so yes if you look at those cars then this will definitely look like a steel deal if you like this vlog make sure to give the thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel and don't forget to check out the audio test of this amazing meridian signature sound system by the way this is the flagship range rover the most expensive range rover you can buy and this is the cheapest range rover the chintu mintu range rover the evoque which is sort of failed now doesn't sell in good numbers because they've sort of cannibalized it with the villa looking very much similar if you like this vlog wo sab main bol chuka hu oh my god what a car i'm in love with this car this is almost perfect few more things here and there like reliability and yeah that would seal the deal and better dealership network as well bye bye